Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rich Sloma. Welcome to today's New York State Archives presentation of the role of the local government records management officer. Today's presenter is Maria McCashin. Maria is the New York State Archives Regional Advisory Officer for the Capital District North Country Region, which is, makes, uh, is comprised of 14 counties. This session is being recorded and will be available for future viewing. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat box to the right side of your screen, and we will answer them at the end of this presentation. Okay, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Maria. Which, given the internet, may take a few minutes. But okay, there we go. Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our winter webinar series. We've got the snow and the cold for the series. I hope everyone is dug out and warmed up. These are uh, some of our webinar webinars for the series. Um, the basics of records management has already been presented and will be recorded. And today, we're going to cover the role of the Records Management Officer, or RMO. So welcome to your role as Records Management Officer, or RMO. This is our agenda. This webinar will cover who the Records Management Officer is, or who the RMO is, what the, the RMO's role is in records management and the responsibility of others in the organization. And it'll discuss some basic elements of managing records and the things to consider when starting a records management program. Now, whether you're new or you've been an RMO for a while, you might use the, the information in this webinar and others in our winter series as a checklist to see how your program is doing. The webinar will provide some tips for maintaining support for your organization's records management program over the long term. The webinar will end with time for questions. If you are a new RMO, a good first step might be to call or email your regional advisory officer or state scheduling and agency services and set up a meeting to discuss the records management program that you oversee. And get on your regional advisory officer's regional records management listserv or the state agency RMO listserv to receive a monthly records management newsletter for information on training, workshops, and other records management news. Also, RMOs in Western New York and Central New York might check in with the new RAOs in, that re in those regions, uh, Sarah Durling in Western New York and Michael Martin in Central New York, if you haven't already contacted them already. So let's start with some definitions of terms relevant to the role of an RMO. Record is recorded information in any format, paper or electronic, for example, created or received in the normal course of business as a part of your work. And increasingly, records are created and retained electronically, which can make records management challenging. Records management is the systematic control or management of records throughout their life cycle, from creation to disposition or permanent retention. The records management officer, or RMO, is the local officer who, by law, is responsible for coordinating and overseeing the records management program. And there are specific statutes and regulations that provide more details on these terms and other information to help you develop a strong records management program. And the intent behind these laws is promoting improved management of government records.
The Arts and Cultural Affairs Law, also known as the Local Government Records Law, and the State Government Records Law, and the regulations of the Commissioner of Education are laws and regulations that state and local governments must follow when managing government records. And together, they provide guidance on developing policies and procedures for a strong records management program. The local government records law defines local government and record, and it requires a records management program and an RMO, and some local government RMOs are defined in the law, specifically towns and villages where the clerk is the RMO, and in fire districts, the fire district secretary is RMO. In other local governments, such as school districts, cities, counties, and other miscellaneous governments, the RMO is designated or appointed by the chief administrative officer and governing board. The state government records law defines record, defines the role of the state archives in appraising, caring for, and making available state agency historical records. It establishes the state record center and authorizes the collection of agency services fees for state agency record storage. These laws authorize regulations, the regulations of the Commissioner of Education, which provide additional details to support the law and help governments meet legal requirements. Part 185 pertains to local governments, and it details the responsibilities of RMOs. It covers the issuance of retention and disposition schedules. This would be the CO2, the MU1, the ED1, the MI1, and provides standards for creating and maintaining electronic records. It also establishes eligibility requirements for local governments applying for local government records management improvement fund grants, among other, among other things. And part 188 pertains to state agencies. It details the responsibilities of state agency RMOs. It establishes requirements and procedures for the management and disposition of state agency records procedures for approving and disposition of state agency records, the use of the state record center, the use of electronic records, and agency fees for records management services, among other things. And these laws require all government officials to take direct responsibility for records management. Some staff may not be aware of the laws related to their record keeping. So RMOs can inform staff of their participation in records management as stated in the law, and this may encourage their cooperation. And cooperation is key in records management. And there are very few governments small enough for one person to manage all aspects of a records management program along with all of their other responsibilities. The text of these laws, the text of these laws can be found on the State Archives website under Managing Records, Laws and Laws and Regulations. As RMO, these are the laws related to records management that you should become familiar with and share with staff in your organization. You might point to uh, staff to the information on the State Archives website. We also have PDFs of these state laws and regulations that you could download and post in your organization. You could also post relevant excerpts from these regulations, such as roles and responsibilities in locations where staff congregate. And you can use the laws to frame policies and procedures developed for specific areas of your records management program. RMO responsibilities are detailed in the Commissioner's regulations for local governments and state agencies, and there are similar expectations for both. RMOs oversee and coordinate the management of an organization's records, and the emphasis in the law 
on oversight and coordination means the RMO is not expected to do it all alone, but should know of any important decisions involving records. They should play a prominent role in planning and monitoring a records management program, maintain a current inventory of an organization's records, help develop and annually review program plans, and respond to records disasters. RMOs should work with other departments to educate department staff about their responsibilities and records management practices in general, and to help them use their information more effectively. In turn, individual departments can inform the RMO about the records they create and maintain and work with the RMO to retain and dispose of records properly. RMOs can delegate responsibility as needed. For example, instructing or providing staff with procedures on how to prepare records for inactive storage or disposition. RMOs should continuously promote the program and practice good public relations because their success depends on cooperation with others. And RMOs should also follow state archives guidelines. And the state archives has guidelines and best practices for RMOs in the form of training, such as this webinar, publication, advice from local government regional advisory officers, and advice from state scheduling and agency services for state agency records. In local governments and state agencies, by law, the RMO is supported by a network that starts at the top of the organization. The chief executive officer and governing board or management are mandated to support and promote a records management program also to identify historical records and ensure their protection. And they designate a records management officer or RMO when not mandated by, by law, as with cities, counties, school districts, miscellaneous governments, and state agencies. State agency management is required to notify the state archives of a new RMO. The State Archives welcomes and encourages new RMOs in local governments to contact us. Send us an email, let us know you're new in the position. And then maybe you can meet with your regional advisory officer to hear about our free services, about grant funding opportunities, and you can keep in touch with us by joining a regional records management listserv by email emailing us records questions, and by taking advantage of training opportunities. State and local records management laws require that all government officials take direct responsibility for rec records management. All government staff must create and maintain records to document the transaction of public business and to retain records and have custody of them for as long as needed. They must also destroy records appropriately, that is, according to the state record schedules, and pass records on to their successors to maintain past operations at that office. And also, maybe most importantly, to support the work of the records management officer in the orderly and efficient management of records, in the identification of and management of inactive records, and in the identification and preservation of records of enduring value. All local government and state agency staff are also welcome to join a regional listserv, email us records questions anytime, and take advantage of State Archives free records management resources. An RMO can be faced with a number of challenges. Most RMOs have to incorporate records management 
into all the other work their job entails. Making records management business as usual is a way to make it less burdensome, but this may take some time. If you're new to the job and records management, that's a challenge in itself, but you're here today. Thank you for coming and off to a good start using free resources provided by the state archives to start familiarizing yourself with records management. If you're lucky, your predecessor left you a good program. And once you familiarized yourself with records management in your organization's program, it may be easy to pick up where they left off. On the other hand, you may have inherited a program that needs some attention and may be a bit of a mess. Under these circumstances, if you're not sure where to start, contact us for assistance. Other challenges may be related to your position in the organization, which may make it a challenge to have a voice. And this is where the laws we just discussed may come in handy. Reminding management and other staff of their roles in records management. You might also present them with benefits of records management and seek their input on procedures to achieve these benefits. And we'll, we'll talk about more about records management benefits in a moment. Coordination of records management and IT functions can be challenging. All organizations create and receive electronic records. The format may be challenging, but the records still must be managed. And familiarizing yourself with some basics on electronic records, and the State Archives has resources, and sharing the information with management, staff, and IT may help initiate a coordinated effort to address electronic records issues. Coordination of records management and legal functions can be challenging. Records are requested under the Freedom of Information Law, they're requested for audits and other types of litigation. And the State Archives has related training and publications to assist with developing a plan to coordinate efforts should records legal issues arise. Budgetary constraints. How to address records management problems with little or no money. That's not a publication that the State Archives has. But we do have an annual grants program for local governments to address records management problems or to add new components to a records management program, such as software to manage electronic records. And our training and publications help implement good records management practices that can help your organization save money. Next, I'm gonna cover some elements of building and maintaining a records management program, including getting started by learning records management basics, emphasizing the benefits of records management to gain support and encourage cooperation, finding partners to assist you, setting goals to build a program, make improvements and add new components, documenting progress, to emphasize benefits and maintain support and possibly get funding to promote your program and some tips for continued growth. Learning basic functions of records management is a good first step for new RMOs. We'll cover some basics now. If you attended the first webinar in this series, the basics of records management. It covered them in more detail. In addition, the State Archives provides year-round training in the form of live workshops and other webinars, and we also record all of our webinars. Live workshops will provide you with the most information on any one records management topic. And you can check out the latest schedule and list of recordings on the State Archives website's workshops page. Another 
start is to meet with the state archives. As I mentioned, email, phone, or set up a meeting with a regional advisory officer, or contact scheduling and agency services. You can plan a visit to meet and discuss your program and get advice on what to do first, if you're not sure, or where to start if you've inherited a bit of a mess. Hopefully, you've inherited a good program and would like advice on how to maintain it. You can share what you've learned with staff in your organization or invite them to participate in a meeting with the State Archive staff. If you've inherited records management policies and procedures, you might start by reviewing what's in place and working towards setting up a similar schedule. Once you've familiarized yourself with them, make sure all staff are aware of established policies and procedures and provide some training if necessary. A good first step is to update an existing records inventory, if one exists, or conduct an inventory if none exists. A records inventory is the first step towards knowing what records are where, identifying needs, and developing a records management plan. And the State Archives has guidance and tools that you can use for conducting a records inventory. And here are some records management basics. A good records management program addresses these areas, creation, retention, and disposition, storage, retrieval, technology, archives and historical records, and policy development. And the next slides are going to be an overview of these aspects of records management. As they're being discussed, you might consider how your organization is addressing each area, and maybe note what's already in place, and what program areas in your organization are strong, what areas need development or improvement, what areas do you feel that you need to learn more about, and what areas would you like to learn more about. This information may help get a records management conversation started in your organization or with state archive staff, or it can help determine areas where you might need our assistance. Records management starts when records are created or received. And records are created for specific reasons. For example, administrative reasons that support daily administrative affairs of the government such as meeting minutes, policies, procedures, and annual reports. Records document legal obligations and protect rights, as with city charters, wills, and property records. They establish fiscal responsibility, accountability, and track the flow of revenue with records such as budgets, ledgers, and assessment rolls. Records are normally useful only as long as they're needed for a purpose. And record retention schedules identify how long records must be kept to fulfill the reason that they were created. At creation, you also want to control copies, limit photocopies and electronic versions, and control distribution. At creation, identify the official record copy. And it's also helpful to document which office maintains it. The record schedules apply primarily to the record copy. Duplicates can be disposed of when no longer needed. Also, address retention and disposition when designing a system to manage records in any format. A paper or an electronic record system should be set up to ensure that records are destroyed appropriately in any format. They should also be a, allow you to identify record series for easy access and retrieval, 
and incorporate retention periods. Electronic systems managing records should be purchased or designed with records management retention and disposition in mind. And finally, preserve historical records as you create them. For example, if you print your organization's official minutes, print them on archival quality paper to preserve the permanent records. Electronic records should also be backed up and stored in a secure off-site facility, and backups checked periodically for accessibility. To address retention and disposition, your organization should adopt the appropriate record schedule to determine the minimum time period you're legally required to keep records. So, for example, counties use the CO2 retention and disposition schedule. Towns, villages, and fire districts use the MU1. School districts and other educational organizations use the ED1. And state agencies follow the state agency general schedule. If you need help using the schedule, you can contact your regional advisory officer or state archive scheduling and agency services. Using a schedule can help improve records retrieval. It can identify and preserve archival records, provide you with documentation on how your records are to be managed, and eliminate ad hoc decisions. The schedule your organization adopts provides you with the necessary legal authority for records disposal. So don't dispose of records if you haven't adopted a schedule. In state agencies, in addition to using state agency general schedule, the ARMOs should work with state archive scheduling and agency services to develop agency-specific RDAs or records disposition authorizations for unique state agency needs. A good records management program implements the schedule and follows it. It destroys obsolete records completely, appropriately, and regularly, such as annually and involving all departments. This way, a schedule becomes business as usual and it prevents records pileups. A good records management program also identifies and preserves permanent records. And it migrates electronic records to ensure that the records remain accessible for their full retention period. This requires working with IT to transfer electronic records periodically to an upgraded or new software platform and new media. And there's a question for you. Why shouldn't you just save everything forever? It would be so easy if we could. I mean, we can, and it would be easy. But saving everything leaves your organization vulnerable in situations involving the freedom of information law, or e-discovery, or audits, or other litigation involving records. If you've got the records, you've got to produce them. And if you've saved everything, one request can take hours or weeks, even months, maybe years. And it can turn up information your organization might have wished it never had. For regular business, saving everything can make retrieval slow and difficult. And this can increase costs for staff time to search and retrieve records. Saving everything can overburden your technical infrastructure with obsolete data and increase costs related to data migration and upgrades. Storage is another important aspect of records management. For physical records, 
it's important to maintain a good storage environment. Records should be stored in a secure, clean, dry environment with non-fluctuating temperatures between 65 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit and stable humidity at 45 to 50, 45 to 55 percent. Records rooms should have good locks on doors. Keys to the rooms should be distributed to appropriate staff only and access should be limited. Appropriate supplies and equipment should be installed for physical records. For example, sturdy steel shelving for inactive records, standard one cubic foot, not two cubic foot, record storage cartons, record labels with consistent information on every label, archival quality folders and boxes for archival records, and fire resistant filing cabinets for vital or essential records stored in office areas. Also open shelving for active files for easy access. Record storage areas should be kept organized. And records in storage areas should be purged on a set schedule. And if you have a locator system, especially for the amount of records pictured here, you want to make sure that that locator system is kept up to date. Also, if you've got backups, store them off site. And this is true for a microfilm backup or for an electronic backup. Locate a secure off site facility far enough away from the main office to avoid simultaneous disasters. Scanned records should have a backup copy of any version of a scanned record. The copy should be stored offline and outside of the imaging system to protect the images from intentional or accidental destruction or tampering. Every version of every image on an imaging system must be backed up. State agencies can use the State Records Center in Albany. This is secure, low-cost storage for scheduled records only. At the record center, records remain in the legal custody of agencies. Access is limited to the RMO and those designated by the RMO. When records have met retention requirements, the record center arranges for confident, confidential shredding. Records retrieval is another aspect of records management. To improve retrieval, you can index select records or scan records and convert them to electronic text for keyword searches using OCR software or optical character recognition software and add meaningful index terms to enhance retrieval. Adding OCR or optical character recognition along with indexing terms benefits records with a lot of textual information that would be easier to review and find information if they were keyword searchable, such as meeting minutes. Adding keywords can allow you to cross-reference different record series and limit searches to specific record series. For a physical records room, it can be helpful to design a locator system. This is a, maybe a database or a spreadsheet to help you track the location, use, and retention of inactive physical records. The State Archives has an access database ready for use that you can download for free from our website. You can also educate others on good filing systems by working with coworkers to create filing systems that are easy to use and aid with records disposition. So for example, you can file active records, those that are recently created or received that you use in your office, file them by record series and identify their retention periods while they're in your office so that all of that information is known when you're ready to file the record in inactive storage or to make it easy to identify 
the record and dispose of it from your office if it's a short-term record. Increasingly, governments are implementing electronic content management systems or ECM systems for electronic records. These systems enhance access to important electronic records and they can network with different software programs such as email systems, Microsoft Office, and other software. ECMS can store a wide variety of electronic formats and are recommended storage for digital records because these systems are designed to prevent accidental deletion and include audit trails to ensure that the records stored in them are authentic and haven't been altered or changed. Another retrieval method that you might implement involves providing direct access to your records, these would be um, records that are open to the public, providing direct access to records through your website. And this can lighten your workload by allowing the public to access records that they can research on their own. Identifying where technology is needed can be an overwhelming aspect of records management. And a team approach can be a good way to address technology needs and issues. A team might include the RMO for records expertise, IT for technical expertise, and staff using records and systems to determine specific needs. A technology team might determine which business functions would benefit from an automated solution. They might plan for technology, including carefully considering any implementation of new technology and ensuring it's designed with records retention and disposition in mind. The team might determine that hiring a, a consultant is necessary to conduct a needs assessment for new technology. The team might evaluate software. They could test it and make sure it does what it's needed to do, that it has open architecture and is the product of an established manufacturer to prevent software obsolescence. The team could develop detailed specifications for technology RFPs, requests for proposals, and compare products. As the RMO, it's important to work effectively with IT professionals and make sure that they know the records management implications of any systems that they're designing or implementing. Help them understand things like record series, retention requirements, indexing needs, and access restrictions. Historical records and archives are another aspect of records management. Organizations should promote and support their historical records. State agencies can promote the state archives, whose reference services provide access to state agency archival records. RMOs may provide access to historical records. To do this, it can be helpful to provide defined research hours for the public so that you can plan to be available at specific times. The use of records should be monitored. And if this isn't possible or difficult to do, scanning records open to the public and making them available on a website can reduce the time you need to spend on records retrieval. It can protect the originals. It's a good public service and it's a way to feature archival records or exhibits highlighting your historical records. You might also promote archives as a resource by scanning and indexing records such as minutes for use by staff for research when making decisions. You might encourage the use of historical records for education in schools or in the community. And you might prepare brochures and finding aids or guides that describe your historical records and, if possible, make those available on a website as well. P 
policy is always exciting and there are many benefits to establishing policies and procedures. They promote program permanence. Developing policies and procedures assures that your inactive records program will succeed you. And putting them in writing can assure your successors will have a program to follow. They can also reinforce uniform practices. A set of written rules can make it easier for staff to participate in records management consistently. Documented policies and procedures are useful for training and can make staff turnover and transitions easier and smoother. And documenting procedures prevents improvised decisions. And it can protect your organization if your organization's record-keeping practices are challenged. Policies and procedures establish responsibilities and can aid in cooperation. Adopting a policy for records management can help ensure a program is supported and staff participate. An RMO can use information from an inventory to develop a records management plan that lays out how you will address records management needs over a period of time. A written plan can ensure continuity. Should you pass the program on to someone else for whatever reason, the plan can let your successor know what you've done and where you left off. Documenting procedures may simply involve writing out the steps taken to perform certain functions, how to prepare a box for storage, what information to put on the labels, having a list of index terms available for paper or electronic records. If records disposition occurs only once a year, written instructions will make it much easier to remember all the steps involved. It also is important to develop a disaster plan for your most important records, or make sure records are addressed in a facility-wide disaster management plan. And the State Archives has a records management policy template which outlines many records management components for which you might consider creating policy. Emphasizing the benefits of a good records management program can help build and maintain that program. And good records management can ensure compliance and compliance can be one of the most convincing issues justifying the investment in a records management program. A good records management program can protect your organization and a well-documented program can provide evidence that records are being managed appropriately. It's also necessary to familiarize yourself with the laws related to your program. Um, such as the Arts and Cultural Affairs Law and the Commissioner's Regulations, which we discussed. Also, the Freedom of Information Law. And Civil Practice Laws and Rules, or CPLR, which provide specific statutes of limitation, which may affect the retention of records. And also the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, or FRCP, which outline requirements for the process of electronic records discovery, as well as the obligations of litigating parties in discovery actions. And information on these laws are available on the State Archives website under Managing Records and Laws and Regulations. Emphasizing benefits can be shown in dollars. You can conduct a cost-benefit analysis or return on investment for things like adding staff, introducing new technologies, changing vendors, remodeling a space for record storage, or a shared service arrangement. Good records management provides the most value from information. So indexing records such as your organization's minutes can make them invaluable for researching past precedents or projects or studies that have previously been conducted. Good records management improves access and retrieval to needed information, and having needed information at your fingertips will allow you to better serve your constituents, which in turn is good for you and your government. 
the ability to be responsive to the public is a good PR tool. A good records management program also documents our state history by helping identify, retain, and ensure the preservation of permanent records and records with ongoing historical and other research value. Finding partners is essential to building and maintaining a good records management program over the long term. And here are some ways you might work with your management or your board. RMOs might enlist support for policy development or propose a resolution to support of support for records, a records program to stress the importance of records management in general. A resolution of this kind may be the first time some of your board members may hear or think of records management as a government function. RMOs might also report on important projects and events, such as successful grants, new technology implementation, Archives Week exhibits, important research that has used your records. If you have record storage areas, you might provide a tour, especially if you've recently renovated or if you'd like to show how an area is inadequate for record storage. You might give demonstrations of new technology to make your board aware that electronic records are records and as such are part of your records management program and also to impress upon them that managing records today requires new tools, more financial and technology support, and specialized knowledge. IT is a necessary partner considering our reliance on electronic records. You might initiate and maintain an ongoing dialogue and develop a good relationship with IT and keep communication lines open and ongoing as technology continues to change. Educate IT on records management issues. Emphasize that electronic systems are more than just tools to manage information. Explain the importance of retention in managing electronic records. And perhaps invite IT to attend a State Archives General Records Management Training or point them to a webinar. Educate yourself on IT issues and try to understand the IT perspective. Be involved in the design of electronic record systems and try to be at the table when new record keeping systems are planned. Volunteer to test or be involved in a pilot for a new system and try to ensure that record keeping requirements are met by technology. Involve your coworkers. Involve them in planning and policy development. Invite staff to a state archives records management training. Or share what you've learned um, if you've developed procedures for records management. Train staff. RMOs might form a records coordination team with coworkers and include department heads or department records liaisons, legal counsel, IT, an historian, legal counsel can also be a good partner to assist with reviewing agreements, particularly any contracts relating to records, such as contracts with vendors and deposit agreements, for example, if you're depositing records in a, in a historical society. Work with your legal counsel if your government is served with a court order that requires you to produce or search records. And you may need to involve IT as well um, if any litigation is relating to electronic records. Legal counsel can also help resolve disputes over records ownership. For example, if someone leaving office takes government files or if you need to reclaim government records that have fallen into private hands. Legal counsel may also be needed when governments are consolidating. For example, when a town and village are merging or if governments are consolidating functions such as police or DPW. Other state agencies that you might work with include the Unified Court System or the Office of Court Administration for court records or when consolidating court functions. The Department of Health 
for guidance on vital records, birth, marriage, and death records. Consultants as an outside authority it can be a good partner to help stress the importance of records management and can devote more time than you can or possibly that you, than you can to a particular project. Consultants can also assist with developing policies and records management plans. They can help train staff, provide expertise for specific projects and tasks, such as technical expertise or needs assessments. Vendors are a source of products and services such as software, and they can provide information about new technology. Your regional advisory officer or other state archive staff in Albany have free products and services available to you on our website. This state archives website managing records page has publications, laws and regulations, retention schedules, resources for historical records, and other resources that are available only online. Other local governments can be a great partner, other local governments or other state agencies, and they can be provide the best information on solutions or in situations where they've already dealt with issues similar to yours. And professional organizations can be a valuable source of information and help. Um, some include Niagara, the New York Association of Local Government Records Officers, Association of Towns, New York State Town Clerks Association, NICOM, the New York State Association of School Business Officials, ARMA International, the New York Archives Conference, the Mid-Atlantic Regional Archives Conference, and the State uh, Society of American Archivists. Setting goals will help maintain a records management program over time. RMOs can use an inventory to identify records needs and develop a records management plan to address those needs. Goals can be both short and long term, and they can help you think through how to proceed and give your program direction. You might plan to set a goal for three to five years and update your plan every three to five years. Your records management program should change as the records and technology available to manage them changes. You can plot how you will address change by continuing to update your records management plan. But think in terms of incremental steps. Work by priorities and try not to start too many projects at once. Break down large projects into manageable steps or pieces. Focus on one activity or spread a project out over one or more years. You might address a single problematic record series separately, for example, weeding and organizing a backlog of student records or building project files or case files. Documentation will remind yourself and others about how much you've accomplished, and it can help promote maintaining enacted policies. And this can involve taking before and after photographs, especially if you've renovated an inactive storage room or implemented a new filing system. You can report statistics on the use of records, such as how many times your coworkers and researchers need information from your records. And this can support the need for technology or it can show the success of new technology. Information on how long it takes you to find certain records or categories of information can support the same. Writing monthly and annual reports about your records management program or including records management information in existing reports can help incorporate records management into regular business. It's not required, but I've heard from some local governments that they regularly present a list of records for destruction to their boards and have them review the list 
and approve the list. This is a pra this practice is one way to keep records management at the forefront and part of regular business. Promoting a records management program is essential for maintaining it over the long term. And these, these are some things that you can do to pr promote your program. You might have a presence on your government's intranet, if one exists, or a location on a shared network where staff can find records management policies and procedures, the retention and disposition schedule, or office retention schedules if you create them. You might advertise a program with brochures and posters, promote training opportunities, share records management updates at staff meetings, report on records for destruction, report on changes to your program and program successes such as grant awards. April is records management month. You can promote your program by bringing a coworker to a state archives records management workshop. They're free. You can circulate records management reminders or have a lunchtime training on any records management resolutions or policies your organization maintains. You could organize a lunchtime training and invite another government or agency with a records management solution to share. You might do lunchtime training with a state archives recorded webinar or invite a live regional advisory officer to provide training. You can host an open house and show off an inactive record storage area, a successful filing system, or new records management software. You might even display items from your archives. Keep record, a records management program active and up to date. You can do this by regularly attending training and keeping current with what's available through the state archives and other sources. Stay professionally active by networking with your peers, not only to learn about how others have addressed particular situations and problems, but to stay focused on records management. Your IT department can be a good source of information to keep up with new technology, as well as listservs of professional organizations. Be willing to change what you've always done. So for example, if you've been creating a duplicative filing system, consider conducting a business process analysis to identify methods of improvement. Look for opportunities for improvement and seek sources of funding. Funding from your government. Try as much as possible to have your government support records management in its annual budget. A program is much easier to sustain if you can depend on internal support. But grant funds may be available, and they are through the State Archives for Local Governments, the Local Government Records Management Improvement Fund program. There are state uh, grants from other state agencies, such as the Department of State Local Government Efficiency Grant Program. Uh, this encourages shared services and consolidation efforts, but many of these funded projects have records management implications. There are federal granting agencies, private sources, and member items. Many governments have benefited from being a recipient of a state legislator's member item. And the moment you've all been waiting for, final words. Managing records is the legal responsibility of all public officials. Be aware and inform others of what their responsibilities are and what they require. Address all records regardless of format from creation to final disposition. And there are simple strategies to keep a records program going. Um, make a point to meet with your regional advisory officer or state archives scheduling and agency services. Attend another workshop or check out the State Archives Managing Records page to learn strategies to fit your program needs. If you're not alone, the State Archives is available to assist you in your role as Records Management Officer. So 
So are there any questions or would anyone like to share ideas with other RMOs attending? Hello, Maria. Yes, uh, we do have a few questions uh, so far. I can pass on to you here. Uh, let's see, we have a question from Michelle. Uh, she asked here, is there somewhere you can find forms? For instance, is there something that the RMO would sign to officially um, make material obsolete? Or we created something but was wondering if there was something more formal out there. Well, we do have samples of records destruction authorization forms, if that's what you're talking about. And, and if it is, you can contact your regional advisory officer and we can send you some samples. There are no required forms, but we do highly recommend documenting records destruction um, and we have sample forms if you'd like them. Okay, also Ginny asks, uh, I think there's about three questions here, so I'll give you the first. Uh, she, uh, I see clerks using RMO after town clerk, the, I guess RMO, the title. Are there certain courses that need to be completed before using RMO after the signature, or is it used by virtue of being the town clerk? If you're town clerk, you don't get a choice. You are RMO by law. And, and, and this is in the arts and cultural affairs law and the regulations of the commissioner of education. Well, the, the arts and cultural affairs law. You are RMO if you are town clerk. Okay, also. Um, Hope you're happy about that, Ginny. Uh, the second question is uh, State Archives has software to, uh, does the State Archives have software to manage electronic records? Is this free and available online? The software I was talking about that's free and available online is an access database used, used for locating your records. Um, you can also document contents of those boxes right down to the file folder, um, but we do not have free software for managing electronic records. Okay, let's see. Uh, and um, she also asks, uh, my small town is still in the paper world. I use dedicated clerk email for general town business. I drop all email to paper for board to review and for my clerk correspondence. Recently I read that personal email is subject to FOIL, so I will not email any board members. Uh, three of five members of the, on the board use a per personal email address. Communication with my board will only happen now at meetings. I uh, fear of having to create electronic records management. <clears throat> so probably more of a comment there or maybe some thoughts on that, Maria? Well, um, we've, we've got publications on uh, developing policies for managing email. Um, we have a specific publication on that. We do have recorded webinars and we have a workshop. So if you want to learn more about managing email and developing policy for email and email records, um, those might be some good resources and you can ask your regional advisory officer for specifics on those. Okay. Um, <clears throat> see. Um, Heidi asks, she said, you mentioned the MU1 for towns. I guess a question about using the MU1 for towns. That is the retention and disposition schedule developed by the state archives that towns adopt by local law or resolution and use as a policy for managing their records. Okay, also I was just going to mention, I just um, sent out the link to the um, directory of the REOs. So if anybody is wondering how to get a hold of their REO, just uh, the link is uh, in the uh, text in the chat area. So, okay, um, next question here. Um, what constitutes an electronic record, Emily asks. Well, um, it, it's, the content of the record. So if the content of the record can be um, found in your ME1 schedule, for example, that would make it a record. Um, and it would be a record if, if it's 
the official copy of record. So if you have um, create a record electronically and then you print it out to paper and you make the paper version the official record copy, the electronic record is actually becomes a duplicate but you still want to manage that record because as long as that electronic record exists, even if you dispose of the paper, you still have the record. So, um, but just kind of circling back around, it's the content of the electronic file or the electronic document that determines what type of a record it is. Okay, Teresa uh, asks here, uh, we are building a new town hall. How do we decide how big the new archives room should be? The general estimate is to base it on the existing records um, plus room for 30% growth. If your records are currently well organized, you perform regular disposition, that would be the remaining records would be a reliable estimate plus 30% growth. If your records haven't been managed well, and they need a lot of weeding and disposition, that might be a good thing to undertake before you move the records to a new, uh, a new building. Um, get them weeded, uh, obsolete records disposed of, organized, and then plan the room based on those remaining records, plus at least 30% room for growth. Okay, Troy asks, uh, how do you recommend we compel management to destroy records that have reached their retention? Well, you can d discuss the benefits of disposing of obsolete records, um, the fact that they can make retrieval and access to those records much easier by reducing the bulk of the records that you retain, <clears throat> same um, either in paper or electronic format. You can talk about um, protecting your organization and making it less vulnerable um, if any sort of an audit or litigation or FOIL request is placed, if you've got the records, you've got to produce them. And it could be a, an expensive process to make records available if you've saved everything. Um, so there are benefits to disposing of records. Um, if your organization has adopted a, a schedule, it's your, your policy for managing your records. So if you've adopted it by resolution, it's your local law, and you would, would expect you'd be following it. Um, if you have questions con or concerns about specific records, um, you can keep records longer than the minimum retention period, but in order to manage records consistently, you want to have a a reason for doing that and you want to be able to document that reason for keeping those records longer so that over the long term that that specific record series for example that you've decided you need to keep it maybe two years longer for administrative purposes um, is regularly maintained in that fashion. So you, if you want to retain records longer than the minimum retention period you want to document your reason for doing that. Otherwise, you know, should someone question the way you're managing your records, um, you have no documentation to show why you're going against your adopted policy for managing your records, which would be your adopted schedule if you're a local government. Okay, um, Mary asks, uh, can the New York State Archives provide us with sample resolutions for adopting electronic records as official records? We do have a, a sample, um, and if you contact your regional advisory officer, it, it is a draft, um, but, but um, it is a sample nonetheless, um, which we'd be happy to share with you. Okay, um, Roland uh, has some questions about the, um, the RMO uh, title again, um, a little different, I think. Uh, he asks, when can we begin to use RMO in the signature, or does one need to be certified first? Well, um, it's, it's, your, it's a title if you are appointed or designated, or if you're identified in the law as records management officer. So, um, 
it, if that's your your role um, and you've been appointed or designated for again um, you, you know you're you're identified as RMO in the law you should be able to use the title and there's also a little follow-up from him from him as well here he said also uh, how many RMOs can one agency have um, they would have one um, and as I mentioned, RMOs can delegate responsibility so that there can be um, other people who participate in the management of records, but there's one records management officer. Okay, um, a question here from Nancy. Um, do emails between board members need to be part of the electronic records? Well, again, same. Email, like any other electronic format, it depends on the content of the email to determine whether or not it's a record. Um, and if the emails are, you know, discussions of official business, um, routine correspondence, for example, um, they are a record and they would have a retention period and they are an electronic format. So yes, they would be, need to be managed as an electronic record or as uh, any other record in any other format. Okay, uh, Christy uh, says here a uh, question as well. We, we recently found a box of warrants from 1845. Um, and it looks like she said, are these now archived or are they historian records? Or maybe should these be archived or do these belong to the historian, I suppose? And, not really Warren. quite sure what she means. Maybe she can uh, well, send a um, clarification. Bottom line is if your organization has records prior to 1910, you need to request permission from the state archives to dispose of those records. Sounds right. like warrants from 1845 would have intrinsic value and may be of an interest historically. Um, it depends on the retention period of those warrants in your schedule. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the retention period would be. Um, they may have re permanent retention um, because of the type of record that they are. Um, otherwise, you would want to, they're an historical record, and you would want to, um, if you wanted to dispose of them, you'd need to request permission from the state archives. Yeah, just, uh, Chrissy said a quick uh, follow up, you're just saying, they appear to be old tax documents. Tax warrants, they, those might be permanent records. So I would um, discuss them with your regional advisory officer, determine um, their related item in the retention schedule to determine their retention period, and then go from there. Okay, Teresa asks, uh, would you go for a new records room in a basement or the attic of a new town hall? I guess she's asking what's preferable, basement or attic? Neither. No. Um, those are common areas that are used because um, they're, they're, they're not um, preferred locations for office space. Um, so they, they aren't priority locations. So often records are designated to those areas. Um, I would suggest taking a look at um, uh, some of our publications, for example, publication 48, Developing an Inactive Records Storage Room. And this describes the, what you, what you want to, um, how you might want to modify one of those spaces should you decide to store records in the attic or the, the basement. Um, how you could modify that space to make it appropriate for record storage. So <clears throat> you could use either space, and th I guess the preference would be for the space that um, creates the best environment for your records. And we have okay. guidelines for that. And um, if you want to more specifics on guidelines for that space, or you want to have someone take a look at either space and help you make a decision, you can contact your regional advisory officer and we would be happy to come out and take a look. 
And I should add that if you are a local government, you can request grant funds to modify a space for record storage. Um, a few folks asked about the uh, being included uh, in the um, email for the recorded audio, and I just wanted to tell everybody at this point, uh, everyone who registered for this workshop, whether you're here or not, will be getting an email uh, with the recording, which will be available in the probably a few, as soon as we're done. Uh, but we're also going to post this on YouTube as well in a few days. Uh, so just to let people know about that. A question here from Jenny. Uh, is there a way to create an official email for our board members to communicate? An official email? Oh, I, I, I'm guessing you're, you mean a email software or I, I think um, basically you would just identify an email address or email addresses for your board members and develop some policies about how they should use that email. Um, for example, using it specifically for board business and then you retain those emails. Um, probably the easiest way to retain them would be the retention period of the longest type of record that they create in those emails. I was going to add here quickly too, Maria. I'm, I'm actually I'm a board member on a turn on a rescue squad, and uh, it's a volunteer organization. And uh, we use uh, our administrator set up for us uh, Gmail. So we're, we all have uh, he's the administrator, the executive director, and we all use Gmail for all uh, rescue squad uh, board business. So it's a great feature. I know people do that as well. So yeah, I think that by the a good point, and, th and I didn't make it, it was something Bob Freeman said, was that, um, you know, set up an email and dedicate it for that purpose, um, as you mentioned, for your rescue squad or for rescue squad business. And, and use a personal email address for personal use, you know, separate personal use from business use with two different email addresses if that's necessary. Sure. Okay, a uh, question here from Dina. Uh, can you do a webinar on, on electronic records. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, did you say can we or do we? Yes, uh, yes. She asked if we could do, uh, if we could do one. We uh, do, and we also have several recorded. Um, yes. And, and those are available on the State Archives workshop page. Yep, it's just going to let folks know. Just go to the New York State Archives website, and you'll see on the top right tab, workshops. You click on that. And then you'll see down uh, just a couple uh, inches below the, the top, uh, view workshop recordings. And we have a whole bunch of um, recordings of uh, webinars there. Yeah, okay. I think there are three that are foundations. And if, if anybody remembers Kent Stutz, um, he, he's, he um, presents a very entertaining webinar. And he does one on document scanning and document management systems. He does one on foundations of managing digital records or managing electronic records. And he does one on um, electronic records inventories, I believe. So those are three, and they're all available on YouTube. Um, so you can access them from your phone if you wanted to. OK, let's see. Um, another question here. Um, Uh, well, I think that's it. There, there are no other questions. I think we've answered the other ones in different uh, ways. And before folks uh, completely log off, I also wanted to say if you're viewing this webinar in a group, uh, we don't really need to know if it's just one person, if it's just you, but if there's like, say, two, three, four, five people, you can just put that number in the uh, the chat and send that to us. That way we can uh, get a good, uh, a better idea of how many, how many people participated, viewed this webinar. And again, uh, you'll be getting a survey um, probably tomorrow uh, on your thoughts. And then we'll include the, the uh, we'll also include the, uh, the link to the recording and that as well. So it'll be a survey monkey survey. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Okay, I just have one comment. Uh, um, 
that uh, warrant copies of tax rolls, if that happened to be what the warrants are, those are permanent records. Um, so make make sure you you don't well you don't want to just dispose of anything before 1910. But if they are um, warrant copies of tax rolls, they are permanent records, and you can find the item under taxation and assessment or tax and assessments in your retention schedule. All right, well, thanks everybody for attending the webinar. Thank you.